All right, guys, my um, update to my automatic knife collection. So I'm pretty sure you saw my Rizzuto Estiletto Milano video first. Now we're going into my entire automatic knife collection. Okay, so again, I'm going to throw this in here because everybody, you know, everybody has their own opinion and what you should and should not EDC, right? So before I get into it, this is one of my EDCs. A Finwolf Cold Steel, or made by Cold Steel. I have used this knife quite a bit, and uh, it shows the wear on the edge of the blade. Okay, very sharp, beautiful knife, kick ass. My Bird by Spyderco. You can see the blade on it. I use it more than the Finwolf. Okay, these both are lock back. These both are freaking sharp as hell. So if I can probably get a good zoom or uh, focus in on the edge here, you can see very little chipping at the edge of the blade because again, I use these more so than any other automatic knife that I have. Okay. You can see the handle is really scratched the hell up. Okay. So, with that being said, yes, I do carry lockbacks. I do carry other knives than only automatics I do carry automatic knives okay now the thing is let's move these over here and again I just I have to do this I have to look at that holy shit is that badass or what <laughs> that is awesome very very cool okay let's do this one also oh yeah freaking awesome right there and let's look again if this will focus on the Rizzuto Estiletto Milano. Okay. And this one as well. I just, I can't get enough of just looking at these knives. They are awesome. Okay, so let's get right into this. Look at that. Yeah, <laughs> that is awesome. All right, guys, so a quick look is a late, or I'm going to say, I believe like 1980s, mid 80s, late 80s, Chinese. Uh, OTF so yeah I had to buy this one this one the handle says warrior on it so let's again look at this this is gonna be a long video as well so if you don't like long videos well you know I'm sorry but these are for the guys that have been waiting in my channel to watch these knife videos. All right. Okay. Let's put that one there. Um Here's my other keychain. This one is mid 1970s, and this was made in Hong Kong. This is a pick lock, so you have to 
pick the lock to close it. Okay, let's move that one aside. Now let's look at the ones that I made for my family, which is this one here. I made this for my, bar my brother-in-law. I wanted it a, um, a Star Wars theme. So I put, um, what is it? The Mandalorian symbol in the back. I carved it into the aluminum handle. I made some file work, but you know, again, I wanted it a rough, dirty type looking switchblade, so I roughed it up. I painted over the designs and all this. And sometimes, there we go, the paint, as you can see here, the paint uh, sticks to this, so eventually I'm going to clean that up, and that won't happen. But I put a saw blade here. And then I put a crisp blade on it. I sharpened it. I took very good careful of how I was um, grinding on the blade to not take off the hardness. So it's still sharp as hell. And it's awesome. So these are one of the ones that are coming out today from China okay my brother-in-law likes automatic knives and he saw that I have been doing a lot of again customizing to the risotto here as well as this other one over here and let's see then let's see this over here I've been doing a lot of custom work to these um, automatic knives for the past few months, I learned a lot and I got very good at it, <laughs> basically very good at it, making these. And this is for my sister right here. Again, she wanted aluminum handle. After the fact, I made her husband an aluminum handle. <laughs> She's like, oh my God, that's so cool. I want that. Ah, <sighs> okay. So I made her an aluminum handle as well. I did file work to hers as well, so you can see that. And another Chris blade. And again, China. Got to come on this side here so I can at least have the camera to focus in on where it says China on there. And Italian Milano. And then the crisp work that I have done. And again, took my time. I always had WD-40, and when it would got, when it would got, <laughs> when it would get very hot, I would stop. So, very nice blade, very good handle, just awesome work right here. Very very cool. Okay, so those are gonna be leaving soon, as well as this one here. I'm gonna sell to a friend of mine. An OTF, one of my older ones. Okay. And I just like to have OTF knives, so I bought this one to replace the one that I'm going to sell to my friend. And this one is all chrome. And this one is a, I believe, a Tech Force, like a Chinese company. So is that one, but you can see that this one's all nice and chrome plated. Very, very nice. I love it. So 
So it says uh, 440 stainless China. Very, very nice blade. Okay. And then we have a AKC Italy right here. Beautiful, beautiful knife. I only carried this one a few times because, honestly, um, I prefer to have the, what is it, the vintage knives. Anywhere from the 1990s and before. At least when I'm carrying knives, those are the knives that I would actually carry. At least more so than any other automatic knives. Now let's look at this gigantic one right here. You, I believe you guys have seen this one before. If you have not, well, this has the rosewood scales. Again, AKC, Italy. This damn thing is very, very sharp. <laughs> very, very cool, look at that. I mean, very, very cool. So it has the false edge on one side sharp edge on the other so this way whenever you do carry it right here it's not going to cut your finger open so it does lock <clears throat> and then we come to the other lever locks i'm pretty sure that you guys have seen before these are made in china but these are very very well made you cannot be disappointed when you buy these knives again they clearly say china on them these are very sharp you can get these to be a razor blade if you sharpen it the right way so again very sharp uh very sharp very fast and Good lockup, no side to side or up and down or anything. I mean, they're very, very good uh, lockup. Okay. And then here's another Chinese with a, um, I want to say a rosewood, but it's not the same rosewood. You can tell the difference. This one's a, a darker one. This one has the the brass looking tint to the actual stainless steel itself again beautiful beautiful and yes I have used this and yes you can see a little bit of scratches on there And again, China, clearly you can see it. Now there, there are differences between the Chinese lever locks, okay? There are some that are like this. These are the early Chinese lever locks. The later version have screws right here holding the, the spring to the handle. So if you have that, hey, that's fine, that's okay, not a big deal. The only thing is I like these earlier versions uh, of these right here because they have the pinned, not the screwed on, okay? Here we have my one of my all-time favorite uh, automatic lever lock knives in my collection. This is a newer shell puller. Okay. Very, 
very sharp. I have used this one quite a bit. I'm not going to lie. I have used this one a lot. So you can see right there, Inox. G-O-M. It holds an edge very, very well. And it cuts even better. You can see up there on my ceiling, I have my ID4, my Independence Day 4 Alien Attacker. But anyway, <laughs> you can see it scratched up the blade a little bit because, again, I do use this one. I just love the, the vintage look. Again, it's a shell puller. I mean, come on, guys, really? A freaking lever lock like the, the, what is it, the knife in the movie The Outsiders? Where Johnny gets his knife, pulls it out of his pocket, and then opens it. That's freaking awesome right there, man. Freaking badass. I love this knife. And this is one of the knives that I do EDC all the time. I just love it. It has, uh, I believe, buffalo horn handles right there. And the spring is a one-piece spring, as in the spring is attached to the actual um, spine of the knife. And this one is one hell of a knife. I mean, seriously. You can hear it close. You flip this, I mean, you can hear the quality, okay? And this thing, fast and hard lock up, man. Beautiful, I, again, this is, if I could have a Hubertus or a Springer, uh, there's several other companies that made them back in Germany, I would love to have, but again, I don't. So this is the next best thing, and that goes with the uh, Rizzutos. So I'm going to put that right here with them, because that's my knife right there. Here is the Vietnam era paratrooper, USA made, and it is made by, if I can have the camera focus in on it, Schrade. Walden, I believe. New York, USA. And again, you guys that follow me have seen this particular knife before. Again, it is vintage Vietnam era. It has very light, light scratches on the blade, as you can see right there. But overall, I mean, damn, it looks like it has never been used. And I believe that does say stainless right there. If we can have the camera focus in on it. But anyway, I mean, just look at the blade. It's never been sharpened like... I would assume, like, uh, stupidly, but um, it has an S on the spine of the knife. And again, just like others, you press this and then you can close the knife. The handle is not cracked, it's not missing, it's not rusted. It is beautiful. A little bit of wear right here, scratching. So you move that up, that's your lock. You can't open it. You slide this down and it fires. So very, very cool guys. Okay. So let's move this one over here as well. And let's start getting into 
the vintage knives, okay? Well, there's one that's actually newer, which is this one here. This is a real uh, Italian or a real Italy uh, made. It's made by Bill D. Shivs, okay? This is a Leverletto. When I got it, it had rust down here. I sanded it, I polished it a little bit, and I took off all the surface rust. This is nickel plated, the bolsters. This is staghorn. This is one of my favorite knives right here. And look how damn fast that damn thing opens. <laughs> So let's see here. If I can get the camera to focus in on the AKC laser etched Italy. There you go. <laughs> Sorry, the camera is shaking a little bit. I haven't eaten and I am very hungry. So, again, there's Leverletto. Let me put the camera down because, again, I am shaking a little bit too much. So, Leverletto by Bill D. Shivs. And then you saw the AKC Italy. And if this was fake, if it was, you would see right here uh, either it would say China or it would say D, like dog, D2 tool steel. Okay, there's another way of telling that it's fake, and that is you see how mirror shine the blade is? If it was fake, it would not be this beautiful, it would be a satin finish, it would be like silver uh, finish. But this is the real deal, and um, I mean, as soon as you grab it, you can tell right away that this is quality, nothing but quality. So these are very high level, high level. <laughs> these are very highly desirable. These are very highly collectible knives right here. Okay, so. I'm going to put this one over here with the rest of these others that I absolutely love. And I'm going to end right now and I'm going to pick up, we're going to talk about the actual vintage knives. All right, guys? Okay, see you there. Bye.